Good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining us on the Rescue and Revive Gospel Show. I am your host, Domenico Denisi, and today in studio, WYSL, we have with us Pastor John Sosa of the Salvation Army. So you got the little emblem there, John. Way to represent, man. I got mine too. I earned this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Typically, we've, we've had uh, not all, but a majority of our guests, as, as Bob D'Angelo can attest to, we have had most come in from the Monroe County area. Probably because I'm a Monroe County guy. But thanks for making the, the travel down here. I know it's about a 20, 25 minute ride, something like that. It was a haul. But you came in style with that <laughs> Salvation Army van. Am I going to get you in trouble on saying you use the company vehicle? Or no, what? I think it's okay. I'm on company time. So. <laughs> All right. If I'm in trouble, I'm company right. vehicle. <laughs> All right, John, let's let's get into uh, before we, um, and again, you'll see, you see the Facebook Live. So some people watch this. If I glance over occasionally just to see if there's any comments that maybe I can respond to. Please forgive me, but obviously on air they won't. Uh, they can't see that, so don't think I'm being rude. Just Not taking a glance every once in a while. John, to begin with, uh, you've been serving the Lord and you've been in ministry for quite some time. Is that right? Yes, actually, September 4th will be 30 years of actually being in ministry. That's amazing. Should I should I ask how old you are? Um, 61, going on 85. That's young, man. <laughs> Half your life, then. Yeah, after like more, yes. All right, walk us back a little bit um, because we have it's just you today. We don't have other guests on the show. Walk us back a little bit on uh, well, if you could, a couple minutes. Start with your testimony. How did how did you come to know the Lord? Okay, well, I was raised uh, in a Christian family. My mom and dad are excellent Christian parents. Mm -hmm. so I was really blessed. I have three brothers. Raised in the Baptist church. My first 18 years, I got all the pins for being in church every Sunday and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, then I went off to college. I went to Bowling Green State University. Actually got a bachelor's degree in radio, television, film. You, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, well, nothing about <laughs> being natural here, man. Not really. All right. Um, and I, I did the Bronco Sun experience. Got yeah. out of college, and uh, my brother had also you know, backslidden. His life really changed, and uh, so I just followed his lead and followed. You know, came back to the faith of my parents, gave my life to Christ at 27 years old. About two years later, he called me into ministry. Yeah. And next thing you know, here I am. That's great. Um, talk a little bit. You said. 30 years ago, correct? Yes. That's, that's when you first came to the Lord in 27 years serving in ministry? Well, 30 years, uh, September 4th, being in ministry. Okay. I've been serving the Lord about 34 years. All right. So different people that listen or we discuss this, we have uh, some theological discussions about uh, you know, conversion. Uh, what happened with you personally? Was it was it a split moment in time? Was it a sinner's prayer? Was it uh, What was it? that is there an actual pinpoint moment you recall? Well, being raised uh, in the church, I, I knew the gospel, but... Um, <clears throat> You know, I was living a life of a sinner, and I knew I needed to come back to the Lord, but I also was counting the cost. I knew if I came to Christ, I knew I had to give up certain lifestyles. And I was actually living with a young lady, and uh, she finally said, you know, we need to break up. And I agreed because the Holy Spirit had been yeah. with me for weeks. Um, I jumped in my pickup truck, and I looked at the wall in front of me, and I thought, okay, I can go to the bar and try and find another crazy woman, or I could go and give my life to Christ. And I decided to give my life to Christ and haven't turned back since. You, you know what I love about that testimony, John? You said something which I have implored people, encouraged people, and I think many don't do often. You said I counted the costs. Yes. You really thought about what that meant. I don't think a lot of people do that. You know, Jesus talks about that in the Gospels about, right, any man goes to war, doesn't he see if he has enough to battle? And right. does he have enough materials to build a tower? I don't think enough people do that, quite honestly. And... If you're going to go with, well, hey, God's going to give you a better life, that's not going to right. that's not going to work, is it? Right. And so you really you really counted the cost, and it was a true conversion. I mean, 27 years, 30 years later, you're still now you're actively serving the Lord. I mean, that to me is very encouraging because you know you go back to the parable of the sower. There's only one seed that falls on good ground and bears fruit 30, 60, 100 fold, and you're still bearing fruit today. Amen. A lot of Christianity, they don't even preach that there's a cost. You know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, yep. when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. Yeah. And I knew I had to give up the drinking, the, 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 all the stuff, sex, drugs, rock and roll. I had to give up my girlfriend. Right. And um, But I counted that cost. And you know what? I haven't turned back since. It's been over 33 years, really, since I, I touched alcohol. Uh, I gave it all up. You know, the rock and roll music, you know, some might think I'm too uh, straight. But you know what? I gave it all up because I want to get rid of all those influences. Amen. Amen. It's great testimony. Let's let's talk about your uh, your life in the ministry thus far. You've been in the ministry a long time, about three decades, as you mentioned. Where did you start? Well, it's, a, it's funny, but uh, September 4th, uh, 1990, I was going to become the youth pastor. It was my first day on the job that Wednesday night. 
I was going to go do my first youth ministry. Well, I was still a traveling salesman. And that day I'm driving down I-71 in uh, south of Cleveland and to my store to write an order. And there's a car that went off the road and was doing somersaults in the middle of uh, the highway. Wow. And the car landed upside down. Wow. So people pulled over and I pulled over and said, here's my chance to be Superman. So I went into my imaginary phone booth and put on my Superman outfit and I ran to the car and the guys were in the car upside down hanging by the seatbelt. Wow. So I thought I want to be the Superman and I climbed in the car on my back to try and get these guys out. I didn't have the strength to get them out. I was a salesman. All I had was a pen. So I couldn't get the guys out. So I got out of the way and then the firemen came and they were equipped and they went in and cut the guys out and got the guys and freed the guys. And the Lord spoke to me and said, John, if you're going to touch, touch lives, you better be prepared and have the right tools. Because all I had was a pen. It wasn't good enough. So from that day on, I realized I got to be prepared with what God gives me to be in ministry. And that's how I started off in ministry. It's kind of humbling. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a powerful testimony as well. I love that. And just the spiritual implications of the firemen coming to try to rescue the physical and you know, a lot of times we, we're getting ready to go on a crusade, and sometimes people think we're firemen because of our shirts. You know, it says rescue and revive. Yeah. It's yeah. got the cross on it, especially if it's a red shirt. They'll be like, hey, you guys EMS, but then that gives us an opportunity to explain, yeah, spiritually speaking, you know, we're firefighters. And so that's a beautiful illustration there. You and know, if I, and my, yeah, my uncle was a fire chief in, in Ohio for many years, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be a fireman when I was at college. I was in quit school my senior year, and I went and took the fireman's test. Wow. And, uh, I was not making a long story short. I flunked the test. I was one step mm -hmm. away from carrying this big, heavy bag and I flunked the fireman's test. I went home and I was crying, but you know what? God had a better plan. He has me putting out spiritual fires now. I love it. Love it. And let me, let me build on that because, you know, Facebook does have some good purposes. I, I social media you have to be very, very careful with. I've messed up on it before, but one of the things it's, it's been beneficial for with me personally is I've found a, uh, Actually, I'm going to be the best man in his wedding. Randy Biaselli uh, gets gets married next weekend, and he's been a ministry partner of mine for a couple of years. We're like best friends now. Found him through Facebook just from watching him. Uh, I've done the same with you. I've watched, watched, I've listened a little bit, knocked on the door, we connected. And uh, that's, I guess, one of the, the pros of the social media, the Facebook. But with that being said, um, I've only known you with your Salvation Army connection. And it, it sounds, if I can remember correctly, You've been have you've been involved with Salvation Army on and off for a long time, haven't you? How long has it been? Well, since really 1998 as a volunteer, okay. uh, but I was an Assembly of God pastor to, from 1990 to 2002. So 1990 to 2002, you were Assembly of God pastor, and then 2002, pick pick up from there. Where'd you go? Well, when I left the pastorate there, I really felt called. I was doing a I was doing a street ministry, volunteer work with the mm -hmm. Salvation Army. I was just feeling call when I was out there on the street that this is where I, this is where the Holy Spirit resonated with me and I knew the Salvation Army would give me more opportunities out there on the street so I left the Salvation of the Assemblies of God in 2002 ended up working at a homeless shelter in downtown Cleveland for a while at from the midnight shift about 450 guys I was kind of baptized into this sure and uh, so then I started you know I was a youth pastor associate pastor with Salvation Army and pretty much I've been with Salvation Army except from 2017 and 18 and 19 I had a little sabbatical Great. Army. Great. Right now, uh, Salvation Army, what it's become. You know, I told you I was affiliated with them to some degree with Captain Calhoun when he was here and he was at a couple of the local Liberty Pole in the West Avenue location. Um, they start when Salvation Army started, I and mean, you want to talk about a powerful gospel movement. William Booth, soup, soul in a shower. I mean, this is this was powerful. I mean, when I was a children's pastor, I showed the torch lighters. That was one of the torch lighters, William Booth. Wow, what a powerful start. But that was a long time ago. 1865. Um, 1865, a long time ago. Tell us a little bit from that vision of William Booth, the first general of the Salvation Army. Where has the Salvation Army gone to and where is it right now? Well, I believe, last I know, they were in 131 different countries. Wow. And I believe Salvation Army in the United States, we have an influence in every zip code in the country. Okay. Uh, it's a huge ministry that most people don't realize. And they think we're just more of a social service, ringing right. the, ring the bells. But we're a church, and they do all kinds of stuff. It take me days to explain everything they do. Yeah, they do a lot. Yeah. Um, right now, your, your home base or your main core or... As I mentioned, home base area. Is it, it's a Liberty Pole, is that correct? Yeah, I'm the, the core officer at the Liberty Pole. 
you're right next to Grace Road, which is a huge church. We're, we'll be considered a mega church in Rochester, right? Yes, yes. So you're right next to it. Talk a little bit about what it's like to be next door to them. I mean, you have Salvation Army, which you're basically, your population is homeless, uh, impoverished. Right next door to you, you have a more uh, affluent church. I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's more affluent. Right, right. It's one of the more popular churches in, in Rochester. How has that relationship been, or how has that uh, kind of dynamic been? Well, I've just been here a year now, and uh, with the pandemic, I haven't actually met the pastors yet. I want to get okay. over and meet them. I've talked to the security people, and we're building a relationship. Um, you know, they reach out, like you said, to a lot of the affluent people. We reach out more to the marginalized, and they have right. the marginalized come to their church, sure. too. But what they can get at our Salvation Army is they can get more interaction with myself as a pastor because, you know, they have, what, a 1,000 people? We have 50. probably more than that. Yeah, yeah. about 50. You know, Grace Road actually has a, a program on here on Sunday mornings now. Okay. They, they have their message. I, I listened to a little bit. He was ready. Beat you to the punch, Bob. I, yeah, so I, I think that's great. And obviously, it's a different dynamic. It's very interesting, though, because it's center of the city. It's Liberty Pole, which you have more affluency. You have a mega church. Then you have the impoverished little kind of inner city church. I just find that fascinating. Maybe you guys can somehow connect on some on some things. Tell us about daily operations of the Salvation Army for you. What, what's it? What's a day look like? I know, our, and you're probably going to say every day is different. And you told me when we first got together that they want you to concentrate on outreach, be an outreach person, correct? Right. right, right. Well, talk to us about uh, some of your responsibilities and what a what a average day might look well, like. Before the virus or after the virus? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't even. I don't like. To, I've talked about the virus so much. I'm I'm spent from the virus. But let's let's talk about. Uh, well, that's a good. I'm glad you brought that up. Let's talk about before the virus, then we'll talk about during. Okay, before the virus, I was doing basically the, the work of a pastor, you know, creating bulletins and worship and PowerPoint and sermons and, you know, a midweek Bible class and Sunday school, which is basically what the things a pastor does. Plus, with the Salvation Army, we have other meetings. And again, they brought me here and they want me out on the streets. So I try and go out to the streets and feed right. people. Since the pandemic hit and I can't have church, I'm pretty much I'm just out there on the streets all the time, which is. Nice because this has given me an opportunity to really meet the people on the street. I'm out there three, four times a week yeah. now. Yeah. So hopefully as we open up church on September 6th, uh, I'll know a lot more people from the street. So really the pandemic has kind of been a, a blessing for me in disguise. Wow. L let me build on that. Um, you talked about you're doing outreach. And I know I'm familiar with a couple. Can you tell the people what you actually do right now for outreach? And can they get involved? Uh, they can get involved. Okay. I actually have a lot of people that want to be involved, but I'll okay. try and plug you in. Sure. Right now... Um, there's a, low, a hotel on the east, uh, west side of Rochester, and DSS and some other ministries have taken people from the streets and put them up at the hotel. They've been there since April. There's about 50 there. Mm -hmm. So every Tuesday and Thursday night, I go out there and feed them a meal. Roadway in. Uh, yeah, roadway okay. in, yes. And then after that, I go to a certain location uh, where there's a bunch of homeless folks, about 10 to 12 of them that are they're living in shacks and tents right in Rochester. It's hidden. The tent City? Is that Tent City? Well, it's called Peace Village. Yeah, Peace Village. But right. I call it okay. Tent City because that explains it more. Right. And so we go and feed them. And then Sunday, uh, outside the church, since we don't have church, I just go out with the truck right outside Liberty Pole, and we feed about 50 people from the community. A lot of them are people that really come to our church. And then sometimes I get out on other nights, too, whenever I can, and just feed yeah. people and just kind of cruise the streets. It's awesome. Love it. Yeah, Love it. Yeah, uh, I, I know, remember when I asked uh, Russ Lord, you know, Pastor Russ there, Father's Heart, about you. I said, you know, before we physically met, I said, yeah, he said he's just like us. He's cut from the same cloth. So I could, you know, outreach and, and evangelism and uh, doing the work of an evangelist. That's great stuff. We know a, another mutual person, a young man named Dylan. Dylan, uh, Dylan Okora. And uh, he seems to be uh, an important piece of the ministry you're involved with right now and I know that that's really refreshed you I know that him he's been kind of like a spiritual son to you yes. talk a little bit about and that's the beauty of relationships within the body of Christ you know there's no generational gap there really isn't you could be 10 you could be 15 you could be 20 you could be 70 or 80 you can have a relationship like a family you could be like a father to a son or a grandfather to a, to a to a grandchild talk a little bit about that relationship well it's very refreshing because you know myself being 61 years old and of course last year I was 60 and this young man at 20 years old uh, comes to meet me, and he has a vision just to play for uh, some music at our soup kitchens. But I start talking to him. I say, Dylan, I just got here. We can do something, you know, help with worship. My wife's a worship leader, but we need a musician. And right away, we just clicked. He's just a special young man. Yeah. And to have a guy that's just now 21 years old, and like you said, he's a spiritual son, has been refreshing. Because at my age, I'm thinking, what young people want to hang out with me, you know? Yeah. Gray hair, wrinkles, you know. <laughs> but you know what, John? That's what we just, you know, to, to talk about that just a little bit. That's the beauty of it. I mean, I've... I've seen the opposite. I've seen um, with myself, just turning 45 this month, 
you know, there's, there's been men that have served alongside me and they're, they're old enough to be my father, yet I'm leading them, so to speak. And, and I see that as just one, of, just one of the beautiful things about serving within the kingdom of God and doing kingdom work is that those generational gaps don't exist. And you have a, you have a spiritual age. Just like you have a biological age. Right, right. So somebody could be 60, but they could be five years in Christ. Or somebody, no, no, you're not. <laughs> but someone could be 30 and they could be 20 years in yes, Christ. Yes. So there's those spiritual years, so to speak. Right. You know, and so it's just amazing to watch it. And with his maturity, he might be spiritually older than me. He's an amazing young man. He's I'm really blessed our church. And he's brought yeah. some other folks like Hannah, Hannah, um, and Haro, yes. these Eastman School students sure. came and they gave us the best, you know, one guy said we have the best band in the land. That's awesome. Um, so it's been a real awesome. blessing to hook up with them. They come to my house Friday night for a cookout. And uh, it's been a really refreshing. I just feel like God has yeah. really just brought us here and brought me some good people. Are we going to call the band the John Souza band? No, I don't play. I'm kicked out. I don't play anymore. I play bass, but Hannah plays 20 times better than me. So I step yeah, aside they do a good and job. preach. They, 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 do, they do a great job. So, uh, John... Uh, Obviously, uh, this relationship, you know, it, it's new and it, it, it's refreshing. Salvation Army, like you said, I think you said it well, a lot of people don't realize all that they do. But talk a little bit about um, this, the truck that I didn't know they ever had. Yeah. I never knew they had a food truck. I mean, you brought that. I had no clue that they had this food truck that you've really been utilizing. Talk a little bit about that. Well, that changed my life. Back yeah. when I was a Sunday guy pastor, I went to visit the Salvation Army in Cleveland, and I saw this food truck. It's called a canteen truck. I said, what's that? And they said, oh, they go out and feed homeless. And it's like right there, God dropped the vision in my heart. Yeah. And we started volunteering, driving an hour down to Cleveland almost, and took the canteen truck out, and I saw how our people loved it. And since then, I've pretty much been around these food trucks. I've actually right. had a few of our own. It's changed my life, and it's the reason I'm even in Rochester. And you take the truck out, you'll see us driving around town, feeding people. We kind of look like an ambulance, but um, we're here to save souls, rescue souls. Right, that's right. But it's right. been a great vehicle because, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's true. When we go out there with food right. and clothes and hygiene and we show them we care, then hopefully we'll get in there. William Bruce said you can't preach to a man on an empty stomach. So we... I like that. We meet the physical needs first. Soup, soap, salvation. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Yeah, so that truck's been a blessing. So I saw one Facebook post. You, you took a hot dog and you used it to explain the gospel. Uh, Send that to the people. Oh, no. share, share the hot dog gospel. I was trying to go back people. over my head again. Well, life is, I called them, this was Sunday, Easter Sunday. I was giving out hot dogs and we were going to be on the news. And I thought, how can I spiritualize a hot dog? So I came up with the idea of, <laughs> we're like the hot dog. You know, we're all a hot dog. We're all kind of a wiener in a sense. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> can I say that? No. It's fine. Go ahead. We're all a hot dog, um, and uh, you know, we, we're, we have a plain life in a sense. Right. I can't remember what I said about the bun, but uh, the mustard we put on is the deity of Christ, gold. You know, And then the ketchup is the blood of Jesus, and we put all that, and then we have a complete hot dog, and we have a resurrected hot dog, a resurrected life, and life, a taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. This is what I learned a long time ago. Okay. One of the marks of an evangelist is you can use, you could point to almost anything and use it for the gospel. So you just proved to me that you truly are an evangelist. Because if you can use a hot dog to uh, share the gospel, that definitely tells me uh, you have the calling of an evangelist. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, let's talk about some of this uh, kingdom work. You're, you're a kingdom guy. I use that term kingdom ministry. And when I say that, what I mean is what Jesus talked about. You know, Jesus never said preach the tribe. He never said preach, you know, preach the uh, seek first the Salvation Army. He never said uh, the kingdom of uh, the Salvation Army is uh, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You get the point. Yes, sir. That's obviously your heart is the kingdom. So, so talk to us a little bit about some of the, or maybe a personal testimony about some of the relationships that you've built along the way, or maybe one testimony of somebody you've seen come to Christ while you've been doing this kingdom work. Okay, well, the greatest story I I can relate is the story of Clyde Hensley. Uh, back when I was in Akron with the Salvation Army, where we would take guys out, we'd walk down the railroad track because we'd be looking for homeless people because they would have little camp yeah. encampments around the railroad track. And as I'm walking on the track, suddenly, I for some reason, I just went off into the woods, not even on the trail, and walked up through the woods. And now I believe I was led by the Holy Spirit. I came mm -hmm. up on the hill, and I looked down on this other railroad track, and there's four guys sitting there. They're drinking, and they would be what people would consider homeless bums right. sitting on the tracks drinking. And all of a sudden, I hear a train horn coming. And that day, we had just done a funeral at our church for a lady and her boyfriend who committed suicide on a railroad track. They mm -hmm. sat on the tracks, and the engineer said they just sat there, hugged Jeez. each other, and the oh. train 
killed him. And we did a funeral search just that day for this lady. Yeah. And now I'm there and I see these guys sitting on the track and here comes a train again and I'm yelling down, get off the tracks, get off the tracks. Three of the four guys get off the tracks. The fourth guy, Clyde, was so overweight and so drunk he couldn't get off the tracks and he's trying to get his beer. So I'm yelling to the guys, get him off, get him off. They got him off the tracks. I'm, no exaggeration. Probably two seconds later, the train came by. Wow. I went down to make a long story short, introduce myself you know, as John with the Salvation Army. And the rest of that summer, we'd come visit these guys. We'd take them to our church, give them showers, spaghetti dinners. We'd let them play music. I brought the guy a guitar. We'd have Bible studies. And we just loved them right where they're at and made them feel human. Right. Make a long story short, a few months later, Clyde went into rehab. And uh, now that was 2010. He's still saved. Now he has music. Uh, he's on the radio. He does a really? coffee house. He's got that's, like three CDs that's out. That's in Cleveland? That's in Akron. He's that's like an Akron. upcoming star okay. in Akron. He's, he got married to another homeless lady who we helped get out of the woods. And she got a college education. He was working full time at a Harley Davidson. And again, he's got CDs out. And uh, it's a great story. That's a very, very powerful testimony that is like that is what it's all about that's what kingdom ministry that's what the work of the lord is all about in, in the gospel wow that's that's my favorite story powerful. To see the i'll remember that one yeah, i'll great. always remember that i mean two seconds away there's actually a video of, yeah. of, of, on youtube uh, throne of grace it's called the throne of grace and it's a video of clyde and myself i suppose right. i want a short film on um, natural well, film send it to me okay I'm fine. i mean we got the john souza band so <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> So, John, we only have about five or six minutes left. What's on the horizon for Salvation Army? What's on the horizon for John Souza? Well, again, we opened up our church services September 6th, and so we'll be getting our great band with Dylan and Hannah and, right. and others, Johnny Allen and my wife. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing church, but I want to keep going out on the streets. Yes. Um, I'm going to try and get into the rehabs. I just want to make a little impact here. You know, Blaise Pascal said the entire ocean is altered by a single stone. Yes. And I just want to throw my pebble into this ocean and make a little impact. I'm not trying to be a great I like evangelist. That. I like that. I just I'm, want to be I'm going to use that one. Yeah. Is it okay if I, I use it? You can use it, sure. You know, <laughs> they, uh, all right. Acts 13 says, David fulfilled the purpose of God in yes. this generation. That's all I want to do. I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. I heard you're having a guest preacher on November 29th. Yes, this Italian, this big Italian guy. When I met him the other day, he said, hop in my van. I think, do I want to hop in the van with some Italian guy said he wants to take him for a ride? But, uh, I, told, I did survive, though. I told that story to oh, somebody yeah, recently. Too. I told that. Yeah, you didn't know me that well, right? No, I, I guess yeah. I didn't think about it. It's just my style. Yeah, let's go for a ride. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's great. Sounds like you got some great things on tap. I mean, it's been a long time, though. you, you got to be looking forward to the church opening up there. I mean, that's been a while. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to preaching again, and let's just yeah. see what God does. So far, yeah. I've been here a year, and I've seen God's fingerprints all over this. You know, again, yeah. not making big splashes, but just making little splashes. Yeah, well, that's all we can do. You know, it's all about the the glory of God. I mean, last thing before I ask you a final question, you know, I, I've I've asked, I've had to ask myself this question: Would I be satisfied? Would I be content if what I'm doing now for the kingdom of God and for His glory for God is is all I would do? If if just staying in this place, the answer is yes. I can tell you that. Like you, I don't have the desire to be the next Billy Graham or the next film. I really don't. I love doing what I'm doing. I'm thankful for it. And maybe I can make that little, you said, splash like a pebble right, right yeah. in a pond. I love that. That's well, a beautiful you're picture. You're splashing in many places. You're all over. You're doing and, things. Yes. <laughs> maybe great, just yeah. a splash. You know, yeah, that's, that's all. I mean, need, just, yeah. just, just leave an impression. But with that being said, um, I do this to every guest. Bob D'Angelo is my witness. He knows this. Could you just uh, sh share the gospel with the people? You have about 60 seconds to do so, 30 to 60 seconds. Go okay, ahead. all right. Well, the Bible says, if any man's in Christ, he's new creation. And obviously, you know, uh, uh, God sent his son Christ, you know, for mm -hmm. God's love of the world. He gave his only mm -hmm. begotten son. Whoever believes in him you know, has eternal life. So you not just believe, but you receive Christ, and you let him make him the Lord and Savior of your life. Uh, and I'll tell you what, when you serve God, he'll do exceedingly abundantly again. All you can ever ask with him. God has just done amazing things with my life. And, uh, you know, continually transforms us from glory to glory in the image of Christ. Uh, but again, when Christ calls a man, he, he bids you come and die. You have to deny it's yourself and take up your yeah. cross. Love that. I love that. And that was a very well said. Um, thank you for sharing the gospel with the people listening. I want to thank you for coming in. Um, I've enjoyed it tremendously. I think this is going to be a relationship, ministry, and friendship for a long time to very come. So. Um, very grateful that... Uh, the Lord's allowed us to start to co-labor together. I know we've talked about some things. Amen. Kingdom days for next summer. I got. I want to talk to you. I'm excited about that, actually. Yeah, the hot tub ready, buddy. Yeah, do you, oh, don't say, say You mean the baptism, the baptism right? Day. Not the hot yeah. tub, right. Oh, did I say hot tub? I yeah, yeah, she did. Day. No, but I really am excited about that. There's something, there's a connection I just made, actually, yeah. recently with a band I want to tell you about. And so I think the Lord is kind of putting that together. So looking forward to more kingdom yeah, work together. 
thanks for coming on the show. And uh, I want to thank everybody in advance for uh, for listening to the show. If you watch Facebook Live and also our crusade, which is our kind of big event of the year, it's coming up September 16th through the 20th. We have 10 men, two evangelism teams going out. We also have our prayer team that has, it looks like it's going to have seven to nine people that goes out ahead of time. And we're going to be going throughout the Northeast. We're going to be going to New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Maryland, um, D.C., Delaware, all those five states, uh, rescuing the lost, surviving and saved with the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. Open air preaching, tracking, worshiping, all of 18 Channel in Syracuse will be my team's first stop to oh, minister. Right, yeah. Can't wait for that. And I'm hoping maybe next year there'll be John Souls will be part of the crusade team. What do you think? I'll bring a food truck. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, thank you so much, John. Why don't you say a prayer and we'll close things out. Okay, give a quick 10 second shout out to uh, sure. Pastor Russ Loria and Father's oh, yeah. Heart. I was down to my last three packs of hot dogs and he called me and uh, an hour before I went to shop to get hot dogs, he gave me over 400 hot dogs. He's been a real blessing, so bless that ministry. He's the hot dog man. I thought Russ, I was the hot dog no, man. No, Russ has provided hot dogs for me as well at times. He has lots of hot dogs. Amen. Something about the hot dog today, that's the theme of the show. I well, know. yeah. No, Russ is great, <laughs> and he's he's really become the epicenter to provide for all these other smaller ministries. So we're thankful for him. But go ahead, say a prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just th thank you for this moment, God. We thank you for this radio program and all those who labor here. Thank you, Lord, that you, you knit our hearts together in love. It's the love of Christ that brings us together. Whether we're red, yellow, black, or white, we're all precious in your sight. So I pray you bless the Rescue and Revive ministry, this radio ministry, Lord. We pray you bless the Salvation Army. Bring in the funds this year, God. I'm not sure how it's going to happen, but, Lord, meet our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ. We give you all the glory, Lord. May lives be changed uh, for your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening to the Rescue and Revive Gospel Show. Have a wonderful evening. Well, that's it. That's okay. it. Yeah, that's that goes fast. Yeah, it does. It goes right. <laughs> Normally, I don't even need my notes. No, I told you. I, I, Everybody, you know, people I come in usually, case. right? Don't they come in? They usually have notes and things like that. Yeah, it's just, it, goes, it, goes, it goes fast. I'm just afraid my mind's going to go blank, you know? Yeah, it goes fast. Did I talk too fast? No. Okay, no you, 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 crying, so. you know what? I get accused of the same thing, though. Yeah, if, if, any, yeah well, if I'm preaching, sometimes people tell me. Um, I talk too fast. I, I think it's exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. I said, no, you, you, you got to be slow. aware of it. <laughs> we have high communication <laughs> skills. Yeah. Yes. Very, very good. Thank you.